Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I've got a fun project for you today. We're talking about Dresden's. Let's take a look at this quilt behind me. Isn't this fun? Now this is just a gorgeous quilt and there are so many things I can hardly wait to tell you about this. So to make this quilt, you're gonna need one roll of two and a half inch strips and we have used this Bloom Bloom Butterfly by RJR and it's just a beautiful fabric. You're gonna need three quarters of a yard of each one of these colors. These are great big squares and you're gonna need three quarters of a yard of all the colors that you choose. You're gonna need some of this background, this white background that's on every Dresden. You're gonna need two and a half yards of that. Your outer border out here, you're gonna need one and a half yards and it's a nice big six inch border. Your backing, isn't that cute? I love bird fabric, I like birdies anyway. But you're gonna need seven and a half yards of fabric for that back. You're gonna need a, a Dresden template. You're also gonna need some heat and bond, about a half a yard of heat and bond. So there's a lot of little things that we need to make this, but the end result is so cool that, uh, and so much easier than it looks that I think you're just gonna love it. So let me show you how to make this, and it's much easier than it looks. So you're gonna take your background fabric or the white fabric that we used with our Dresden, that's this right here, and we're gonna sew a strip to either side of our two strips. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna to go to our jelly roll and pick two strips that we just love. And there's a lot to love in this group right here. So I'm gonna pick, I think from the green, and I'm gonna pick this bird one. I love little birds. My kids say, you're to the bird watching age, mom. <laughs> I am, it's true. All right, so we're gonna sew these together a quarter of an inch right down sides and and I'm gonna teach you my trick for long sewing here. So I'm gonna lay these together, come under and sew a couple of stitches to anchor it. And then I'm gonna take a hold of these strips and I'm gonna line them up exactly. And I'm gonna lean back. <laughs> this is all part of the process. Lean back in your chair and then you can just sew along until it gets up to where they start coming apart again and then you just take it and lean back. Now, you can solve this lean problem if you just pin, but I'm not a pinner, so we're just gonna lean back and hold on and sew along. And whenever they start looking like they're separating, I'm gonna stop and reline them up and sew again. All right, now let's press these open. And I'm gonna lay my, uh, my dark side to the top, like this, and then just iron it back. That way my seam will all stay toward the dark side, hopefully, and uh, it'll lay nice and flat. All right, so now the fun comes in, and we're gonna take this background fabric right here and cut a few pieces off that. So you're literally gonna sew all, your whole 24 set of strips into two strips, so you will have 12 sets. And then we're gonna take this background fabric and we're gonna cut it in some different pieces. We're gonna cut a two inch strip, a three inch strip, a four inch strip, and a five inch strip. So I've already got my, I've got my, a couple of them cut right there and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these. And you're gonna cut six of each. So six two, six three, six four, six fives. So there's my two, my three, here's my four, right here, and here's my five. Now, the fours and the threes are gonna to stay together as a pair, and the twos and the fives are gonna to stay together as a pair. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, we're gonna take our two strip sets and we're gonna sew, and I'm gonna sew the two on one side and the five on the other. And we're gonna sew it right down the side like this. And we're just, it doesn't matter what side you add them to because we're gonna be flipping our Dresden back and forth. But we're gonna start here and sew a quarter of an inch right down the side. And you just kinda wanna do the same thing where you just line them up, you know, lean back in your chair I have this vision of the whole sewing world just leaning back. We're leaning back. And we're sewing a quarter of an inch. And we'll just come forward. And then we're just gonna lean back again to get another big, a big long sew ahead of us. And 
Make sure it's still lined up. All right, now I'm gonna flip this around so I can sew down the other way and I'm gonna add my five. Now what this is gonna do by, by sewing these different size strips on, it's gonna make our Dresdoms random cuts. And so I'll show you that. That's, this is just a really fun one. All right, and just a little bit more. All right, now let's press this open. And I'm just gonna lay this on here. We're gonna start with the, uh, pressing the five inch piece back and I'm just gonna roll it back like that. And as I press that back, that little seam will stay on that same side and that's what I want. I want a nice flat piece. Now I'm going to roll the other side back and just scoot this the other direction. Make sure there's no pleats or no folds. You know what, that's not working for me at all because I'm a left-hander so I like to go this way. So we're going to flip that right around and finish this job up. You know, sometimes you think you can do these fancy things when you're filming and you just can't. You just got to do it how you do it. All right, so now we have these strip sets. And I have this one here that has my five and my two, and I have another one that I've made earlier that has the three and the four. So you can see here, these strips are in different places on the strip set. And when we cut them, that will be even be more apparent to you. So we're gonna, we're gonna find our Dresden. Where is it? Oh, here, there we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay our Dresden on here like this. You wanna make sure that you don't catch any of this selvage edge in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. Now my Dresden right here is lined up on the very edge. And I'm just gonna make a cut and make a cut. And then I'm gonna cut this edge off right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this around and now I'm gonna line it up on the top edge like this. and cut that off. And you can see, I, I only have to cut one side at a time now. And so these, as we lay them out, these are gonna be in, look at that, completely different places. And so we do have about a half an inch of play on here. And so if I wanted to like, you know, be wild and move it like right, cut this one from the top so that it's even, even deeper in that cut, you can do anything. Now, to be fair, when I made this, I actually had like two five inch strips on either side of uh, my, my two strips. And this is just part of the design process. And so I really could move my dress in wherever I wanted it to go within that realm. But it was so much more yardage than cutting the strip way. So, you know, feel free to do whatever you want, but um, know that uh, if you put two five inches, you're gonna need at least a yard more fabric. <laughs> All right, so now let me cut a few from this other strip set. And so I'm just gonna, pull it as far over to the side as I can without hitting that selvage edge. Come up and I'm gonna come across here and I've got it right on the bottom, smack on the bottom and I'm gonna just slice this up the other side. All right, so here's this piece and you can see as I lay this one next to these, again, it's gonna be in a completely different place. Now if I, I'm gonna flip this one around this time and do it this way make my cut and then I'm just going to trim off this little top edge right here. Make sure it's still 10 inches. You want your blades always to be the same same length so we're cutting on the 10 inch mark on all of these and so then this one will be just a little different and this one will be much different. Do you see how these are coming together? Let me show you here right where, the, where you can see them. So here you can see I've got these lined up together and you can see how different they stagger. Just by flipping your blade one side to the other and changing the size of your strip, 
they're, they just move all over the place and it just makes a really fun pattern. All right, so to make a Dresden, you've cut out your shape and now all we do right here is we're gonna fold this in half and sew straight across the top. And so let's do that. Let me show you. Fold it in half and sew straight across the top. Now for your big round plate, you're going to need 20 of these. So I'm going to sew a few of these together. And we're just, again, fold them in half, sew straight across the top. And I'm going to do that to four of these like this. And one more. All right, now I know you're probably thinking, if you've never made a dress and you're thinking, what is she doing? And, uh, and that's the, the fun and the beauty of a Dresden for me. So you take your straight edge, you fold it in half, you sew straight across the top, and then when we flip these, it peaks. So just like that, you have this cool pointed Dresden, and I like to push out this, uh, let me see, where's my, let me grab a scissor. There's all kinds of cool tools for, um, you know, making your, making your points come right out. I just tend to grab a pencil or a scissor, whatever's handy. And so, again, when I go to flip these, now there's a couple things you can do if you want to re reduce bulk. You can clip this little edge right here, but don't clip into the seam. But what I generally do is just kind of fold it over with my finger and then push it through. And it makes a nice, sharp point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the iron and we're going to press these down. All right. So now, oh my goodness, I'm a mess. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little seam right here in the middle and we're just gonna eyeball it and make sure it's centered, mostly centered. So I'm not measuring, I'm, it's not perfect, but it's gonna be mostly centered. And, and it's honestly, it's pretty close. I'm pretty, I'm pretty accurate. And you'll wanna make sure you are pretty close anyway. These are pretty forgiving. All right. So now we have these cool pieces that are all, they're all pressed down. They've been sewn straight across the top and we get to put them together as a Dresden. You're gonna sew 20 of these together to make a circle. And we're, you and I together right now, we are gonna sew, we are going to sew four of these. And I'm actually gonna move them around a little bit because I have a lot of the same fabric right here. And, but honestly, you can't even tell because the stagger, so that's kind of fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these right sides together, and I'm going to start here at the top. This matters. This seam matters. This seam down here does not matter. We're covering that with a circle. It's not going to matter. So we're going to sew four of these together like this, and I'm going to back stitch on that very top. And then I'm just going to come down the side. And when I'm sewing my whole plate together, I will sew two, 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 then four, four, four. And then I start putting them together in groups of four and five groups of four makes a plate. So we've got a little back stitch. And back stitch is just where you go back and forth when you start so that it, your, your seam doesn't come out. All right, now what I'm gonna do, I've sewn two, two, and two, like this. And we're gonna sew these together as four. And I'm gonna look at them, I probably want to, yep, we're gonna do it this way. And those are gonna be just a little off. That will be so fun to look at. All right, we're gonna do this. Now, normally on quilts, we don't backstitch. And the reason we don't is because uh, every seam in, on a quilt, every seam is enclosed in another, another seam. So the back stitch doesn't really matter. But this right here, you want this part to hold together because you're going to be, you're going to be sewing this down, you're going to be messing with it, you're going to be sewing with it, and these are not going to be enclosed in another seam. All right, now I have a big piece right here that's started. And this is my, I have 16 blades on here. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And we're going to add these last four in here like this. And that's gonna make our big plate. So right here, I'm gonna put this on here, line up this edge right here. Again, we're gonna back stitch. We want that to stay together and not pull apart. And we are going to line them up 
and sew a quarter of an inch right down the side. And then I'm ready to close my circle. So uh, actually, you know what? This is a really, a really good tip right here. Count before you close. So we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I can't tell you how many times I've closed something and gone, why isn't this laying nice, you know? And, uh, and it's been because I'm off. So count and then stitch together. So I am going to start right here and do my little back stitch. And lay my seam down and just sew right along there. Now, one of the things that's interesting about these Dresdens is that um, depending upon your seam, you know, we all have our own seam allowance, but depending upon yours is, is whether or not, this is based on a perfect quarter of an inch. If your quarter of an inch isn't perfect, um, you may have to coax that center to lay down a little bit. And, um, and I generally do. My quarter of an inch is pretty skinny. And so I generally have to kind of coax this down and, uh, or take my seam a little deeper toward the middle. Pay attention to that. And so what you get now is this big, beautiful plate right here. And then we're going to mount it on the square. Now the square, um, this, is a little, uh, this is a little bit of work for some people because um, sometimes it's hard to know how to cut a square. We've got three quarters of a yard and we want to cut it down to a 24 inch square. And so I'm going to line this up here on my mat and use my mat as my ruler for my 24 inches and I have to adjust a few things. Now you'll notice right here, so this is my three quarters of a yard of fabric. I am folding it in half. I, uh, I would much rather cut a shorter piece. You know, when I tend to cut a long piece, you know, it, my ruler uh, will slide or it's harder on my shoulder. Not sure what's going on, but I like to cut from a small area. And so make sure that you're lined up, you know, your two edges are lined up and straight all the way across. Now, a lot of times when people say cut this way, they'll get an elbow in their cut. And that means it's not folded straight. If it's folded straight, you should get a perfect, uh, a perfect straight line. And so just know that if you're, if you're not, if it's not straight, you know, or you come, or you cut it and it has a little bit of a bow to it that, um, you know, you want to check your fold. All right, so now we're cutting this at 24, and here's my 24 line right here. And so I'm going to put my ruler on here to the 24. Make sure that I'm lined up, that it's not any smaller or, you know, that everything's just so. And so you're going to cut off a piece about this big. Now we're ready to cut it the other way. And the other way, it's going to be much wider than 24. It's going to be almost 40. And so I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to fold it in half and I'll match up my little centers there. And they have a nice uh, crease center for us. And don't forget, you have to cut off your selvage edge right here. And I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm going to slide this all the way to the edge of my mat and then come over 24 right here. Make sure that your line is straight on here. And, and, you know, if you're worried about it at all, like if you feel real insecure cutting, what you're going to want to do is cut it a little bigger. Give yourself some room to play with. You can always cut it down. You can't actually make it larger. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem. So what we're going to do now is we are going to uh, cut that at 24. <laughs> Whew, I had a look again. I was like, wait, I just cut that without thinking. Don't do that. That's not a good plan. All right, I'm going to press this little fold line out of here like this. Make sure that it lays nice and flat and you might have to use some steam or some starch or something so that this, whoops, so that this just lays nice and flat. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half like this, my square. Let me move this out of the way. I'm going to move this in half, fold this in half and I'm going to fold it in half again. 
And then I'm going to press these edges. So we're going to fold, press this part down right here. We're going to press this part up here. What that's going to do is it's going to give us a very center of the block and it's going to give us edges to line up our Dresden on. All right, so right here is our square. We're going to put our plate on here. Look how beautiful this is. All right, now line up. So I'm, I'm noticing that I have my uh, pieces are, and my little X in the middle is like right in the center. My edges are lining up fairly nicely, and I'm going to put some pins in here just to hold this on. The next thing we're going to talk about is this circle right here. Now, when we make a Dresden, most of us who are, who are Dresden makers, and honestly, once you see that cutting a wedge, folding it in half, sewing the top together is all there is to a Dresden, you become a little addicted to them. I became a little addicted uh, to Dresdens and still am. Anyway, I've got four little pins in here and we're going to talk about the circle. And so once you realize how easy it is to make, you'll make them. And when you do, the size of that circle changes the look of your Dresden dramatically. If my circle was very large, it would look completely different than if it was very small. What we did on this quilt was we took our little leftover piece of our background square, and mine is here, and we made the center circle out of that so that it matched the background square. Now, <laughs> when we go looking for that circle, let me just say, um, most of us have that size in our head already. So we, we hit the cupboards. We look for the coffee cup, the saucer, the oatmeal container, whatever it is that's the right size. It's this size, right? <laughs> this size. And so uh, you can use that. Um, but I, we put in a, a paper for you, a PDF that has a five inch circle on it. I have also been known to use um, a roll of tape. And this is very close to what I wanted. However, I've also been known to take some tape off to make it the right size. <laughs> now it's kind of a little wasteful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace around this circle and make it just a little darker so that I can see it right through my heat and bond. And, um, and if you wanna use, you know, again, a cup, a saucer, anything that's in there, that would be perfect but we're putting this in here for your convenience and there we go. I can't actually draw and talk at the same time. All right, so then when we go to put it on our heat and bond, and you're gonna need about a half a yard of heat and bond for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this on here and you can see that circle through the other circle. So you'll be able to trace it once you've kind of bolded it, you'll be able to trace it like this. And then you're just gonna rough cut it and iron it onto your, your uh, circle fabric. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna really rough cut mine. And I'm just gonna iron on in here. Now Heat & Bond has two sides. It has a paper side and it has kind of a sticky bumpy side. That's the glue. You're gonna lay your piece right on your fabric, but not on your square. I, all of a sudden I had to look, is this my background square? You don't wanna cut that twice. All right, so we're gonna lay this on the edge of our fabric right here. And I'm just gonna press this on and it literally just takes seconds, maybe three passes and you're on there. So then you're gonna cut this out right here and you're just gonna cut on the line like this. Trace it out. And you can tell I am not perfect, but I'm pretty close. There's a lot of concentration going on right now. And then you have your round circle. We're gonna peel this off and you can just, you can score it with your scissors or you can uh, um, score it with a pin. You don't, you, uh, when you're doing a raw edge, you don't actually wanna like, cause I used to roll it, but it kind of frays the edge of the fabric. So then we're gonna put our middle on there. You can see it, I'll move it over here so you can see it better. Right here. See that middle, how good it looks? And then I'm gonna slide it over here and I'm going to iron that on. Now, before you iron on your circle, what, I, what you wanna do is you want to fold it back like this, make sure it's the same distance on both sides and then let it go and fold it back this way and make sure it's the same distance top and bottom. 
so that it's in the center. That's the easiest way to do it. And then you're just going to press this on like this. So once you get your circle on, now you get to sew it down. And to be honest, I use all my leftover pieces in between my circles to kind of adhere my Dresden down. And so even if they're odd shapes, you know, like this, I'm just going to lift this up and stick this under here and I'm going to iron it on there. Let me show you how I do that. And so just iron it just like this. And then I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to peel that paper off. And then when we press this down, literally it will hold itself in place. So all my little scraps, I would just tuck under there, iron them, peel the paper off, press it down and do that. You know, I mean, it's, uh, it's an easy way to like, if, especially if you don't love using pins or, but it just kind of adheres it to the thing. So it's like stuck on there. So when you take it to the machine, it's not going to move around a lot. All right, so at the machine, what I did with my dresses on the wall is I did the tiniest little straight stitch. And so I am bringing my, um, my presser foot and my needle right to the edge. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna start, and start in the valley, and then we're gonna sew right along that edge. And you'll wanna go nice and slow, right to the edge, and you'll wanna have your needle down so that when you pivot it, it doesn't come off. So then we're going to pivot and come down this side like this. And I'm just staying right close to the edge and pivot and come back up. Now you can sew these on by hand. <laughs> you can. And I have. I love to sew dresses on by hand. But if you're in a hurry, you know, uh, or if you are not comfortable hand sewing, this is such a great option because it looks, it's just so clean, it looks so nice and it holds everything right in place. And you will get faster and faster as you go along, but start slow so you can, so you can get it nice and straight. So when, uh, when you get this all finished on, we're gonna put this together as blocks. And you can see here, we've got three across, three big blocks, three big blocks down. That makes a quilt that's about 81 by 81. And again, we've only used half our jelly roll. So if you wanna make a giant quilt or two of these even, you could. So the other thing I wanted to play with on this was this is our Dresden blade. And what would it look like if I didn't sew the peak? If I didn't fold it in half and sew straight across, what would it look like? And so I made this little one right here and it is just the straight wedges. And look how fun that is. It's a completely different look. You know, when you look at this one and you glance at the ones behind me, it's a completely different look. And it just is, I mean, it's just fun and beautiful, but again, something completely different. So I hope you have fun with this. It's a little freeing to be able to move your template wherever you wanna go. And, um, and we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Dresden Bloom Quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.